Palm oil is just that, oil from the fruit of a palm tree. Sounds about as vegan as anything, right? Well, this most certainly plant-derived oil found in processed foods, makeup, household cleaners, toiletries, biodiesel, and more is far from a black and white ingredient. It's one of the world's most hotly debated crops with concerns over deforestation, habitat destruction, loss of biodiversity, species extinction, and a slew of human rights violations in its wake. Thus begging the question, is palm oil vegan? It's Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another vegan nugget. Today's video is one that's been requested more times than I can count and one that I greatly hesitated to produce. Not because I think the truth about palm oil is unimportant by any means, but because when you are a brand new vegan or when you're considering going vegan, the intricacies of what is or is not vegan beyond meat, dairy, eggs, and honey can easily overwhelm leading to the exasperated, well, what can I eat? Or even worse, being vegans too hard, I might as well not try. While it's always important for us to be informed about the products we are choosing, and I believe education is absolutely key, I want to say to brand new or would-be vegans to focus on eliminating animal products first. Get your bearings and you'll start to find a growing awareness of other elements. This is not to excuse the effects of palm oil we'll be discussing, but rather to assure you that in removing animal products from your diet, you will be making a huge impact already in all of the areas that we will be covering. I'm going to attempt to make this video as simple and concise as possible by touching on the major elements. If you want to delve deeper, which I'm always a fan of, and for detailed citations to every study and fact that I'm mentioning, please see the blog post for this video, which has resources and close to 60 academic citations. This issue is terrifically complex, and while I'll relay suggestions at the end, you'll see that it's difficult to produce a clear-cut yes or no to the video's establishing query. There are three main areas of concern when it comes to palm oil. The impact on the environment, animals, and people. I'll briefly touch on each, though all three are inextricably linked. Let's start with the social impact or human side of palm oil. Once heralded, even by the United Nations, as a high-yielding, environmentally friendly, economically viable, and even healthy magic bullet to help struggling farmers in undeveloped nations build economic stability and provide a cheap yet nutritious source of calories, palm oil production has proven to be far from the golden child of workers' rights. Though some case studies and accounts continue to praise the positive socioeconomic aspects of palm oil, and it very much has dramatically improved the economies of producing countries, namely Indonesia and Malaysia, which account for up to 90% of palm oil exports, the palm oil industry is rife with human rights abuses, including the illegal seizure of indigenous people's lands, labor trafficking, child labor, unprotected work with hazardous chemicals, and long-term abuse of temporary contracts. Palm oil workers in many cases end up like indentured servants, struggling to pay back debt. Of course, there also exist case studies of villages finding great prosperity from the introduction of plantations, though often new problems can arise from the cash influx, like gambling and alcohol consumption. A concretely negative aspect of palm oil farming for humans, the environment, and non-human animals alike are toxic pesticides. Pesticide usage isn't monitored or controlled on plantations, with around 25 different types being regularly employed. One of great concern is Paraquat, the most toxic herbicide marketed over the past 60 years, which has been banned in 13 countries. Agrochemicals have been shown to be more harmful to women than men, and women on palm oil plantations, as with many crops, are responsible for the mixing, handling, and spraying of the pesticides. This brings us into the environmental impact of palm oil production, which is irrevocably enmeshed with the impact on native species. The main elements of concern are loss of forested land leading to habitat destruction and loss of biodiversity, and the extreme greenhouse gas emissions caused by burning peatland, which I'll explain in a moment. According to the World Watch Institute, Indonesia emits more greenhouse gases than any other country besides China and the United States, mainly due to palm oil production, with the World Resources Institute ranking its output as seventh in the world. While clear-cutting forested lands in and of itself is environmentally destructive, the conversion of what's called peat land into plantations is nothing short of devastating. Peat is a waterlogged organic soil layer made up of dead and decaying plant matter that is rich with carbon. 
Peatlands are vital to the reduction of global warming as they absorb carbon and other greenhouse gases, and Southeast Asia, where palm oil plantations are blossoming, contains three quarters of the world's tropical peat soil carbon. If all of this peat stored carbon were released into the atmosphere, it would be equivalent to the carbon emissions from about nine years of global fossil fuel use. These vital ecosystems are actually not ideal for palm oil plantations, and ample grasslands and degraded areas exist whereupon plantations could be built. However, companies can subsidize the cost of clearing peatland by selling the timber taken from the areas, and thus follow the most profitable route. To convert peatland into palm oil farms, it has to first be drained, which causes the peat to decompose, leading to heat trapping emissions that can continue for decades. The peat eventually compacts, falling below the water table, at which point it must again be drained. In addition, peat soil is often too acidic for oil palms and must have chemicals added for viability. Possibly the most devastating practice for the environment and humans and non-human animals alike is the intentional burning of peatland as an easy way to clear land for agriculture. These fires, which are some of the world's largest fires on records, release hundreds of years worth of carbon and pollutants into the atmosphere and burn for weeks to months. In dry years, the carbon emissions are astronomical. In 1997, fires in Indonesia released as much CO2 into the atmosphere as the United States had that entire year. And when it comes to the environment, when you outdo the United States in your destruction, you know it's bad. These fires can even become a public health hazard, with the smoke and smog from fires in Indonesia in 2013 causing respiratory problems as far away as Malaysia and Singapore. Of course, these fires aren't just destroying the forests, but also the living beings within them. Animals are burned alive while trying to flee and are often massacred by farm workers as they try to escape or purposefully driven back into the flames. In the 1997 fires alone, Borneo's orangutan population was reduced by one third when close to 8,000 of these already endangered primates were burned to death or directly killed. Poachers also take advantage of these burns to kill fleeing animals like the Sumatran rhino, which as of 2008 had a population of fewer than 275 individuals. The threat this destruction poses to our world's biodiversity cannot be overstated. Southeast Asia is one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet. While comprising only 3% of the world's surface, it contains around 20% of all plant, animal, and marine species on the planet. It has four of the world's 25 biodiversity hotspots, which are defined as a biogeographical region rich in biodiversity but under anthropogenic threat, meaning from human-caused pollution, and 70% of its original habitat must have been lost. The orangutan is certainly the face of palm oil's devastation to non-human animals, with the critically endangered Sumatran population hovering around 7,300 as of 2004 but hundreds of other threatened species in Southeast Asia are also being horrifically impacted by palm oil production. The Sumatran tiger population, for example, was reported in 2008 to be a paltry 176 to 271 individuals left, with elephants and rhinos also at great risk. With all of this destruction and violence, what's being done about palm oil production's long shadow? In 2004, the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil was established with the objective of promoting the growth and use of sustainable oil palm products through credible global standards and engagement of stakeholders. Composed of oil palm producers, processors or traders, consumer goods manufacturers, retailers, banks, investors, and environmental and social NGOs, the Roundtable has been largely criticized for not implementing its own standards. There are numerous loopholes in the RSPO certifications, like plantations being grandfathered in and extremely subjective language for judging high-value conservation forests versus forests that are green-lighted for clearing. Groups such as the Union of Concerned Scientists have called for objective parameters for sustainability, such as caps on greenhouse gas emissions, to no avail. Companies like Unilever, who are also RSPO members, are still sourcing their palm oil by unsustainable and ethically questionable methods, with plantation workers crashing the 2013 RSPO meeting with the call, Don't Certify Exploitation, and three case studies finding rampant human rights violations at RSPO certified plantations in Indonesia. Novi Haryanto, the Center for Orangutan Protection Habitat Program Coordinator, said that despite the RSPO, quote, 
Forests are still cleared and orangutans are continually killed. All criteria on sustainable palm oil and certification process are merely public lies. So, is there any hope? And what are we to do as vegans or potential vegans when we walk into a store to make a purchase? Is there such a thing as sustainable palm oil? And after all of this, is palm oil even vegan? Well, palm oil, in theory, can be made sustainably by using degraded lands and grasslands instead of forests and on mineral soils instead of peatland. Increasing yield on existing plantations through tree breeding and better management can reduce the needs for using more land. Governments can call for mandatory labeling of palm oil on ingredient labels, as currently there are over 200 palm oil derivative terms in use. Groups like Palm Oil Investigations believe that mandatory labeling will place companies in a position to source certified sustainable palm oil, which is different from the RSPO's stamp, because consumers will be aware of their use of palm oil and be able to demand sustainable sources. They also argue that contacting brands and encouraging them to shift to actual sustainable palm oil is even preferable to full boycotts. The logic being that palm oil companies aren't going to be going out of business anytime soon, and if no one demands truly sustainable options, they'll keep producing with their current cheap and destructive methods. Of course, there's also the argument that such consumer-driven tactics are vain attempts to fix the underlying problem of capitalism with capitalistic efforts, and that an entire overhauling of our economic systems and food distribution politics is needed. Now, I'd like to try and put this into a greater vegan framework, if I may. With any agricultural production, there will be destruction. I have a whole video on whether vegans kill more animals than non-vegans due to field mice, rabbits, and other animals who are unintentionally killed during harvests, as well as a video on whether you can even be 100% vegan and whether you're vegan enough, all of which address this issue and are linked below. Should we be aware of and constantly striving to educate ourselves about where our food and other products come from and whom they impact? Absolutely. The danger comes when we are so overwhelmed that we throw up our hands and think that it's not even worth it to try. Animal agriculture, as I demonstrated in an extensive video that's linked up there and below, accounts for 51% of global greenhouse gas emissions, a staggering 91% of Amazon rainforest destruction, and is itself a leading cause of species extinction and loss of biodiversity, not to mention the deaths of trillions of beings every year. I'm not here to play the numbers game or place the impact of palm oil beneath that of animal products. What I'm trying to say to those of you who are newly vegan or wanting to be vegan is that the efforts you are making are not discounted by those you are learning to make. If we give up entirely because we aren't perfect, what kind of impact are we having? Yes, we can always improve, which to me is the definition of veganism, doing the best with what we know and always working to educate ourselves and adjust our behavior accordingly. So I would encourage you to look into this further for yourself. Check out the blog post and the resources. I've included links to lists of products known to contain palm oil and lists of palm oil free products as well as a phone app you can use to scan products and check for palm oil and more. Luckily, palm oil is in processed foods, so if you eat a whole foods diet, chances are you're largely avoiding it already. But do know that vegan food items, toiletries, cleaning products, and more can contain palm oil. Now I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you consider palm oil vegan? Whether you're vegan or non-vegan, do you avoid palm oil in your products? And if so, why? What do you think the solution is to this industry? Let me know in the comments. I hope that this video has been helpful. The time it took to produce this video clocks in at around... If you'd like to help support Bite Size Vegan so I can keep putting in the hours to bring this educational resource, please check out the support links in the video description below where you can give a one-time donation or receive perks and rewards for your support by joining the Nugget Army. The link for that is also in the iCard sidebar. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. Now go live vegan, always keep learning, and I'll see you soon.